What's up, YouTube Nation? I'm the Coffee Bean Jim. Today we're going to take a look at doing a map that I do in GIMP. So I'm going to go step by step on how I go about things. You notice here that I'm creating a new image. I'm doing. I'm going to set the width at four, the height at six. And I'm actually going to click the advanced options. And make sure my resolution is set at 400, and I'm going to put the background color um, as transparent. And that'll give me a blank canvas to start with. So there's my image. Um, you know, first thing I'm going to do is create a new layer. I'm going to give it a name that way I can keep all my layers separate, so I know what's going on. Um, I named named that one the line work. So that's going to be my basic line work for when I'm drawing my continent and my water land masses. You notice here that I hop over to Deviant Art. Um, I use a parchment background for a lot of my maps. I find that it gives us a good sense of texture. Um, you can colorize it and get your color set up. So I always pretty much use the same one when I do go with this method. Um, it's on the second page. You'll scroll down. You know, I'll bring it up right there. Now, I'll actually put a link into the video description and you know link you right to it so that you can use it and follow step by step if that's what you want to do. So when I do it, I'm going to paste it as a new layer. And then I'm going to flip it. So right now it's in the horizontal position. So I'm going to flip it into the vertical position. Make sure you're on their clipboard layer over there. Do the transform and flip rotate it 90 degrees. And then I'm going to end up resizing this thing. Basically, I just don't want those dark edges on the parchment to be in the map. So I'm going to end up uh, resizing this thing a few times, getting exactly how I want it, trying to get all those dark areas out. So I'm going to pull it down a little bit here. And then I end up scaling it one more time to get rid of the top dark area. Now you can leave the dark areas in if it's some sort of texture that you want, but just for this case, you know, I decided I just wanted the straight up parchment area. So happy with that. I take that. I'm going to rename it and end up pulling it down as well. You know, oh yeah, I got to layer it to the image size. If you do that, uh, it stays larger than the section that you want it to be or larger than your image. So then I'm going to create a new, another new layer. I'm going to name this one white, and I'm going to use a bucket fill of white and color the whole thing white. This is going to give me an easy way to see how my line work is going. I'm going to end up moving the background down. I notice I hid the clipboard just for the sake of it not being distracting, really. I'm going to use your basic circular brush. I think I moved the size all the way down to a four. Yep. And then I'm going to zoom in and start drawing the line work. The reason I zoom in is if you stay zoomed out, you'll find that your brush strokes are very smooth and it almost becomes unnatural looking. If you zoom right in, you can create the more jaggedy coastline sort of uh, land mass that you want. So I'll go through and do this little section up. I'm going to actually speed up the video so you can kind of see how I go. But I go through this the whole thing. I also stay zoomed in because as I go along and I just draw the map, I have no idea what it's going to look like when I zoom out. So it's kind of a surprise on what I get it or, you know, how it comes out, I guess. So I end up doing the whole thing. I'm going to draw in a few little islands and then I'm going to hop over to the continent. And right here you can see that I'm doing all these little things. They are actually going to be bodies of water on the continent itself. I zoom in out a couple times just to see the areas that are empty and need some sort of terrain feature. But in the end, you'll I'll zoom all the way out and you can kind of see all these little bodies of water that are finished up. So there's your basic idea. So the first thing I'm going to do is click over there. I'm going to get the whole white section that is water, and I'm going to delete it. Now you notice I click down. Make sure you click onto the white section when you do this. That way you get all rid of all that whole section. All that's left now is the landmass area. And then I go up. I click back into the line work because that's the section I want to work with. I use the little selective wand at the top, the smart selector, whatever you want to call it. And over there where I showed you, those two little red boxes up in the corner, those make it so that you can hold the shift button and collect multiple bodies or multiple sections of your image. So I'm going through here and I'm hitting all of the bodies of water that are on the continent. Once I have all of those selected, I'm going to click back down to the white layer and delete them. That makes it so that the only section on this map that's left white is what is actually the land mass. And you'll see what I mean in just a moment. You notice I, there's a few areas, too. I'm going to have to clean up in the end, which I go through that as well. But there, I got all the main sections covered. Click down to the white. I hit the delete button on the keypad or on the keyboard, and it gets rid of all those. So now the only thing left that's white is what is actually land. I'm going to go in through here. I'm going to use the eraser. 
get rid of whatever line work might be left as well as the whiteness. So, you know, I'm cleaning that part up there. And then clean that one up there. Click down to the white and clean those up as well. Um, I think there was only a couple on this one that actually had to clean up, so it worked out pretty well for the most part. Tighten that one up. And you know, it's like that one I didn't quite catch when I was uh, doing my selective area, so I'm just going to do it by hand. Erase the little white area in there. And then I'll zoom out and see if there's anything else left I need to catch up on or see any areas that I missed. At least grow through. Now here's where I'm going to clip down to the uh, clipboard again. I'm going to turn that on. You notice the whole area that is shown as parchment is what's actually going to be water. So I'm going to click onto the white and I'm going to do alpha 2 selection. That selects the whole white landmass. Click down onto the clipboard and then I want to go up select and invert it and then delete it. Or, I'm sorry, I didn't. I did the water first so I didn't invert this one. And then, you know, I'm going to go in, colorize the image, and then I start to go through and colorize each section of this. Um, for this map, I'm doing a much more, uh, I guess, a grungier sort of look. So I decided to play around with these a little bit, figure out the color. I didn't want that. It looked a little too cartoony to me, so I ended up taming it way down and getting more of a gray drab sort of look to it. You'll take a little while getting the color set up and exactly what you want. Right there, the reason I'm moving my mouse around there is you want to go through and you want to write those numbers down and label it as water or something so that you remember what it is. And then I'm renaming the area, the land there, putting in a new layer. I'm going to go back over and get another piece of parchment, copy the image. I'm going to hop back over to GIMP move on to my land one because this is the part that I want to be parchments paste it as a uh, new layer turn it vertical I'm sorry yeah turn it vertical resize it And this one actually turned out pretty good the first time. I didn't have to adjust it very much. So I kind of just checked the corners a little bit. Scale it, and then I believe it's basically set after that. Now I go through and I make sure I layer to the image size. And put it to the right size. And then I merge it down so that it's on the land layer. I'm going to click back up to the white so that I can see that. I'm going to go over to my color selector, click on the white, and that selects that whole white section there. And then I'm going to go select, invert it so that I don't I don't want to delete my land area. I want to delete the area outside of the land. So I'm going to click back down to my parchment. Notice it has that whole area section, and then I delete it. So that leaves me just the land mass. And I select none so I can get an idea what it looks like. And I'm going to colorize that. Um, now I've played around with a few different ideas here. I wasn't quite sure what I wanted. I finally kind of settle on a grayish, brownish sort of color. And you'll see later on towards the end of the video, I end up changing this anyway, because I was originally thinking of going for more of a deserty sort of look, but decided against it. And when I show the water layer, it all merged together. So there's your basic water and your land mass. And I hide the white one for now. I'm not going to need that again, probably. Notice I hid the line work as well. You can keep it on there if you like to have the nice clean lines showing where it's at, which I kind of show you there. Um, I decided this one I didn't want to have it. Instead, I'm going to use a script foo and I'm going to select the land section and I'm going to bevel it and emboss it. And this is actually an add on you can get for GIMP. I will put it in. Here's my settings. You're probably going to want to use the same one so you can pause the video and check out what you got. Click OK. And it's going to create sort of a 3D look to the land mass. So everything looks a little, there's an edging all the way around it. Your water looks a little bit deeper than the land section itself. You want to merge when you do these, merge from the top one down that creates your land shadow. 
And then I usually I merge that down to the land part itself. Um, I decided not to in this one for a little while because I was debating how I wanted to go about it. But So there's the basis of the land. So that's my map that I'm working with. Got my water, got my land. Now I'm going to start adding some terrain and adding some features to this. And again, I have different brushes for mountains and forests and hills and stuff like that. I will put a link to those down in the video com or the video description as well so you can grab them. You will need to um, probably Google how to install GIMP brushes and how to install the script foos because I have an older version of GIMP that I just I haven't updated because I really like the one I was working with and I haven't had any problems. But it used to be really simple. Um, Google it up and it, you know you'll be able to find the instructions pretty easy. Um, I don't know if it's changed any different. It might even be easier now than what it was before. Um, I remember I had to create a basic folder and just kind of plop everything into it and restart GIMP. But, so I'm kind of going through, and I'm looking at the mountains. You'll notice that I click over there where it says the size, and I'll click that little yellow box-looking button um, like I just did there. And that makes it so that the brush itself it reverts back to its default size, and that's usually when it looks the cleanest. And every time I pick a new brush, I'll hit that button so that I can get in, make sure it looks nice and clean. And I'll actually speed the video up here in just a sec, because I play around with a bunch of different ideas and mountains, and it's really just a experimental to see what I like and what I don't want. So I kind of go through, add some different mountains in here, move what I like, change what I don't like. Um, add in a few little smaller terrain areas. This is kind of, this is what gives the whole area its atmosphere and its flavor. Here I'm messing with a little bit of forest, kind of get an idea of what I wanted. I put a few little grasslands down there. And, you know, it's just really just a matter of placing stuff down, seeing if you like it, and if not, getting rid of it and replacing it. Make sure you do everything on different layers. You'll notice that I did this one. I created a new terrain layer. All of my terrain features are done on that terrain layer. That way it's easy to fix. Something I'm going to do here, a nice little trick, is if you select the water one, and then you do alpha to selection, it's going to select all of the water. And then I'll go through and I'll invert that. That way all it selects is the land. And then when I place things down, like I'm doing here, this little foresty swamp, marshy area, when I paste it down on the land, it won't appear wherever there's water. So I can paste right around the water itself, and my forest doesn't appear on the water area. It only appears on the land. And it gives it a much uh, cleaner sort of look. So I kind of flip through again, decide how I want to, you know, what forests I want to use on the train. Um, I kind of pick through, and I'll speed the video up again here in just a moment, so you can get an idea of how I place it. I used a lot of basic pine tree sort of looks on this map. As I, I was like I said, originally going for maybe a desert thing, and then I completely abandoned that because I decided not to. And I place a nice big forest up there in the corner, a few here and there. Again, I have the water, only the land selected, so when I place those forests around the water, they won't appear in the water. I'm going to select none, that way it cleans it all off, gets rid of those lines for me. And here, I'm going to uh, make a new layer. You can see up there, the label on this one is shadows. This is where your... Uh, map really starts to come alive and to get character and you want to have you're actually going to create another layer in a moment called light so for the shadow i use one of the brushes there that are feathered on the edges you know i change the size to go what i want i use black and i'll actually change the mode up in the top corner top right corner of this layer to multiply and what it does is when you, oh, I also turn the opacity way down to a 5 over there on the left. And right here I'm turning it over to multiply. And basically it's going to start building grooves and shadows onto this map. Um, you can see I kind of follow around the edge of the mountain right here. Increase the size up. It takes a little bit of tinkering with to get exactly what you want. You know, in the grooves, the valley area where the sun doesn't quite hit. And it's basically what you're doing is you're starting to do the light and dark areas and creating valleys and hills and pits. And this will really make your image come alive. And, you know, I change my thing up a little, so it ends up being a little bit too dark. So I end up deleting that out and bringing my 
size up a little bit. I also decided to go with a more brown sort of color with this map since I was using, you know, the brown basic landmass to begin with. Black ended up being just a little too dark. So there you go, and this time around you can see that it starts to create the darkness in there without it being so obvious. You know, I kind of go around the edge of some of them. Uh, water, bodies of water around the edge of the mountains. I'll do some different line work. And once I create the uh, light layer, I will edge all of these dark areas with the white. And right there I just created the light area. You leave that one as normal, and I turn it over to the white. Thing and they sped it up here so I kind of go around anywhere you put a dark area you usually want to edge it with white I darkened up the water a little bit so you know I kind of went around the edge there and I'm gonna put some darker image I'm gonna create some little hills and lines you can see the dark area there and I switch over kind of color a little and then I switch over to the light I want the white color and then the I forget to do it a first time but you want the light layer over on the right there we go and then I edge it and that kind of starts to create what looks to be like a hill right there and you'll see it more in just a moment as I zoom in and I do a bunch more of them and it all kind of starts to pop so I flop back down to shadows I flip over to my black and I do a few little lines it comes down through And then I'm going to swap over to my light, swap over to the white color, and edge all of those. And it's hard to see when you're zoomed in like this, but when you pop out, you can start to see those ripples on the land right there. So it could be like a cool area that, you know, the players could investigate, maybe like uh, steps of some sort or something like that. So I kind of just, I'm going to speed up the video here in a moment again too, but I just basically do the same thing. You know, I darken some areas up, create a little bit of conclave, a little bit of texture to the land itself. You can see I'm edging the mountains there. The bodies of water are usually down in valleys and stuff, so I edge those a little bit. Um, I wanted the mountain whole area up there to kind of look like it was up on a hilltop sort of thing. So, you know, I put that in, then I start edging it in the white, and it makes it look like they got a, it's up on a hilltop sort of area now you gotta this is really zoomed out since this is a big map so you're quite zoomed out so you don't have to zoom right in but if i was to zoom in and kind of maybe do this region i might make those hill sections like a big hills that they're climbing up off and then the mountains themselves come up off the hills kind of um and here you can see i'm just using the smudge tool kind of looks like a finger and just kind of feathering the shadow out a little bit and I just hop, I'm going to speed the video up here, but I hop back and forth between just doing the lights and the darks and sponging and trying to give the whole area a look. Um, you know, it's trial and error, really, because I end up doing this part here, not liking it and deleting it out. And you'll see it gone again, and I redo it. And it's just a matter of playing around with your shadows and your lights and darks and kind of, you know, getting the look that you want. And, you know, I do these lines here, and then I'm not liking them, so I get rid of those. Just do a couple lighter ones. I draw the mountains usually, that way they look like they're coming up out of the ground. Um, I like to do in between the trees and those areas kind of darken them up a little bit. Um, the coastlines are always good, kind of, you know, as the coast kind of comes down into the water. So I do a lot of the coastline areas. Um, I'm adding a few more of those ripples right up in here. Now, right this part I end up getting rid of as well. I was thinking of maybe doing like some sort of little pocky hill mark type thing, but ended up not liking it, so getting rid of it in the end anyway. Um, I just end up leaving it with just the one slight hill there. And, you know, I just take a look at it, see what it looks like with the line work again or not. Now it's time to color. This is the second part that will really start to make this image pop and start to make this map look real. So I'm going to start colorizing stuff, um, mainly the trees I start with. I find a nice shade of green that I like. And being that this one is more grungyish looking, I went with a more uh, swampy, brownish, grayish sort of green. And I'll zoom in. I'll color some areas to get an idea if that's how I like it or not. You notice I do a... I goofed up the layers there, so I had to kind of clip up section out, but I forgot to put in my... Or, color layer up there at the top you want to make sure it's down below the terrain that way you're not covering up the terrain 
and you know, I put in a few marks just to see if I like the color. And then I hop over, I pick a larger circle, and then I just start clicking around on it. Because I put the color layer beneath the terrain layer, the terrain stays up above it, so you can still see the terrain. Otherwise, I'd be going over top of the terrain, the trees. And Now I'm speeding up the video again here in a second, but I just do the same thing through all the forest. I give them the shade of green, and I'll actually go through and do the um, swampy area there in a little bit of a lighter green. Yep, so here I'm changing the color down to a lighter, more pastel-y, swampy color. Zooming in. Now I, you can right here do the same thing again and go up and... Uh, alpha to selection for your water and then invert it so you only have the land selected but I didn't mind giving the uh, water a little bit of a greenish tinge down there kind of I figured the idea that it's these are I use this hell area is more of a marshy sort of idea so the water itself might still be a little bit murky so I finished filling those out and I'll go over and I'll select the smudge tool and then I'll just start feathering this whole area out and all of the little green sections and I'll speed it up again so we can zip through this. But, you know, I just kind of feather each area out till I get to have the look that I want. All right, and then the next section we're going to do is start giving some color to these mountains. So I wanted a grayish-white sort of color. And I'll zoom in. I don't worry about going off lines really too much. Um, I make sure that my I got my feather tool selected, my opacity still down, and then I just start coloring in the mountains. And you don't have to worry about going outside the lines or anything because it'll actually in the end give it a little more texture and look like the mountains are really coming down off of, or you know, give it more of a 3D sort of look. So you know, I just go over top, hit the areas that are colored in, um, the dark areas I skip over speed this up and go through so there's all of the basic mountains all right so here's where you can see that I end up deciding to change the color I wasn't quite happy with the brown um, but I didn't want something real green and cartoony so I play around with the colors a little bit here to get what I want and you, you start to see that the forest and the mountains all start to just blend right in once I figure out the colors that I'm looking for. Start turning the lightness down and it starts to... Uh, you'll also notice the areas where I did the conclaves, using the light and shadows and stuff starts to pop a little bit more. So I thought that was a little too light, so I start dimming it right down, getting that contrast in there. I think I hop back and forth a few just to get an idea. Yeah. And, you know, finally get happy with it, get with the look that I want, hit OK. And these are the colors I decided to go with. So the next thing we got to start doing is the water. So I click onto my brush. I'm going to create a new layer with rivers. Make sure I'm going to put the river layer all the way at the top just because it's easier to see as I'm drawing the rivers. I use my brush. I select the... I'll brush over there that I decided to use that one there. I put my size, I believe I started at five. Or four, maybe. Yep, five. Um, you'll see I kind of zoom in and I do a little line just to see if that's the one that I want. I'm just happy with that. I change my color over to blue and I actually use the eyedropper. For some reason, my river layer moved on me but I'll swap over to the eyedropper I click on the water layer so I want the same basic shade and I'll zoom out and I click in some of the water that way I get my color swap back over to my brush and then swap back over to rivers and then I start drawing in my rivers um, when you do rivers always remember that they always flow downhill so usually rivers will start at the highest point which is in this case the mountains and then they work their way down the land um, use your conclaves that you did with your light and your shadows to follow along you don't want to go over top of these hills obviously that you created and um let's see what else water usually merges on the way down so as you start to get closer to the ocean or to the 
body of water that you're going towards, they don't spread apart or don't feather out. They'll start coming together. So this one, I you know, I start coming down and I end up linking it down to the big lake that's down there. And then I'll pull another one off of the mountains that merges onto this river before it gets to the lake. Now, this, you don't always have to follow the same idea. Later on, I actually have a river that splits off because rivers can split for sure. But most of the time, you know, they follow the same basic logic of merging together as they move down the land as they start to follow the contours of the land itself. So this one comes off and then I merge this one into the main river as well. So I'm going to speed up the video here as I continue drawing rivers. Um, you know, in this case, I just pulled one off to the side and who knows where it came from. But apparently there's some mountains over there probably. And then I just start linking all these bodies of water. Again, I like to zoom in when I do these. That way everything looks really uh, jaggedy and more natural looking. And once I finally happy with the rivers I got, I'm going to go up to the rivers, I'm going to alpha to selection, and then I'm going to do the script foo, layer effects, bevel and boss. And for some reason it didn't pop up here, but um, I had to change it around a couple different times to kind of get the look that I wanted, play with the settings to see which one works. Um, I believe I did a inner bevel and I made sure that it went down. Um, here I'm just zooming into each area where it connects into the water because the color changes a little bit depending on what area you select. So I'm just cleaning up any odds and ends where the water merges into the other bodies of water or where the river merges into the bodies of water. Um, you can see the map starting to take shape now. There's a big empty area kind of in the center of the map there. I'm not quite sure what I want to do. So I start playing around with a few ideas. Um, I end up just putting in some grassland sections. And then I put in some grasses there just to give it a little, so it wasn't so empty looking. And I actually played around with a few things. I drew like a big pit that was there, like an abyssal pit sort of thing, and ended up not really liking it. So, All right, so here's where I'm starting. To, I missed that one mountain way back when. So I'm actually going to start topping the mountains in white. So you do the same thing. Make sure you're on your color tab. Get your color, lighten it up to a white, use your paintbrush with a feathered edge and opacity, turn the opacity way down. It looks like I have it at like oh, a 5 or a 9.7 or something here. And then I just start doing the tops of all of the mountains. And this is what's going to kind of give them a little bit more of a 3D look, giving it that idea that they're topped with snow or something. And you really just want to feather it down. Have to run the paintbrush all along the top. Um, when you use opacity like this, you have to click. So you can click over and over and over. Every time you move the brush, click your mouse button and pull it down. Speed this up a little bit so that we can move along. Um, and in the end here, I'm just kind of going through, uh, hitting any of the lighter areas that might need to be accentuated. Um, you know, I kind of do that little land bridge down there, make it look like it's bumped up a little bit. Um, I'll go through and get some darker sections and put that into the water so that the water has a little bit of a darker uh looks like it has depth to it i guess edge of the mountains in white you know you need to put a little dot on each of the islands so they kind of look like and here's where i'm going through and i'm pick a darker color put in some depth to all this water and that's it so that's your basic uh idea of how to build a map using GIMP. It's not too hard. Um, I'll actually probably write up a step-by-step -step tutorial as a blog or something, but you know, stay tuned for that. In any case, I'll put the links in to the different things that I use down below. You guys have a great day.